stories around the world to stories here at home. This is the National News Broadcast. A pleasant evening. I'm Dilanjali Ananda. I'm Ruben Hetiarachi and here are today's headlines. For the first time in the world, a COVID-positive mother gives birth to quadruplets. United States decides to discontinue the MCC agreement with Sri Lanka. US reaffirms its continued support of Sri Lanka as an ally. The first investment agreement of the Colombo port city signed. His Eminence, the Archbishop, requests to limit the Christmas celebrations to religious observances. A new mechanism to purchase agri-products of farmers. Provincial Council elections to be held two months after formulating legal provisions in the Parliament. Spanish Prime Minister directed to self-quarantine. We begin with news from home on your top story. Millennium Challenge Corporation has taken steps to discontinue the proposed 480 million US dollars worth compact grant schedule to be provided to Sri Lanka. The US Embassy in Sri Lanka has said that the proposed grant, which was expected to be provided within a period of five years, has been cancelled accordingly. The Millennium Challenge Corporation Board decided to discontinue the proposed MCC Development Assistance Grant to Sri Lanka on December 15th at its meeting held in Washington. The U.S. Embassy in Sri Lanka has indicated that the five-year 89 billion rupees grant approved for Sri Lanka will be made available to other eligible partner countries. However, the United States have reiterated that the country will remain a friend and partner to Sri Lanka and continue to assist Sri Lanka in responding to COVID and building its economy. Steps were taken by the Hapala government to enter into an agreement with Millennium Challenge Corporation under the Millennium Challenge Development Assistance Program. Accordingly, Sri Lanka became eligible for the program in the year 2016. The relevant proposed projects for the program were presented to the MCC by the then government in 2017. The Millennium Challenge Corporation Board approved the relevant proposed projects in 2018. Accordingly, Millennium Challenge Corporation has approved a five-year, 480 million US dollars compact, which is a 89 billion rupees worth grant with the government of Sri Lanka. The then government approved the relevant proposal during the same year. Future steps of the program were also discussed at the beginning of this year as well. Many political parties, including the Sri Lanka Podhujana Peramuna, objected the proposed grant, which was taken forward by the previous government in a forceful manner. The objections were leveled against the proposed grant owing to the opinions prevailed on the potential threats to the sovereignty, freedom and national security of the country. A special committee was appointed by the Cabinet of Ministers to study the provisions of the grant and submit relevant recommendations accordingly. The Prime Minister appointed a four-member committee headed by Professor Lalit Seri Gunarwan on January 1st to study in this regard. Accordingly, the committee report with relevant recommendations was handed over to the President on June 25th. The recommendations of the report have indicated that the MCC grant could affect the constitution and legal framework of the country. The committee had pointed out the manner how certain sections of the provisions in the grant agreement would affect the sovereignty, freedom and national security of the country. Therefore, the committee had recommended the government to refrain from signing the present proposed agreement. The first investment agreement of the Colombo port city, worth one billion US dollars, was signed today. It was held under the patronage of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha. The first investment within the Colombo port city will commence with one billion dollar Colombo International Finance Centre mixed development project. The agreement between Brown's Investment, the strategic investment arm of LOLC Group, and the China Harbour Engineering Company Limited was signed this morning under the presence of Prime Minister Mahinda Rajapaksha and the Ambassador to China, or to, of China to Sri Lanka, Kui Zin Hong. Prime Minister Rajapaksha said attracting foreign direct investment is a key priority for the government and that this landmark project is a strong indicator that Sri Lanka is now back in business. He further said that the government invites investors from around the world to explore the multitude of investment opportunities that Sri Lanka presents with its strategic location and human resource capabilities. 
The Colombo Port City versus brainchild of Prime Minister Rajapaksha launched during his presidency together with Chinese President Xi Jinping during his state visit to Sri Lanka in 2014. With an initial investment of 1.4 billion US dollars and expected overall investment of 15 billion US dollars when completed. The Port City is said to be the leading business, retail, residential and tourist destination in South Asia. The ambassador Zen Hong said that China has once again demonstrated its confidence in Sri Lanka and the commitment to help Sri Lanka's economic and social development. He further said that it is well believed that the International Financial Center project will not only effectively boost the vigorous growth of Sri Lanka's finance and other industries, but also create more high-quality job opportunities benefiting the general public and society. The project comprises a total land area of 6.8 hectare acres implemented under two phases. The first phase of the Colombo International Finance Center Mixed Development Project with an investment of 450 million US dollars and comprising a land area of 3.06 hectare acres will consist of incorporation of special purpose vehicle company a jointly managed by Brown Investment and China Harbor Engineering Company Limited. The overall project, which will be implemented in a sustainable and socially responsible manner, expects to create significant quality employment opportunities across a variety of sectors. Archbishop of Colombo, His Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit has requested the devotees to celebrate the forthcoming Christmas festivities while prioritizing the religious observances. His Eminence emphasized the importance in limiting the Christmas celebrations to their respective families amidst the COVID-19 outbreak in the country. This year in Sri Lanka, we have a, a situation that is very tragic due to this COVID-19 pandemic which has spread all over. Most of the people in Sri Lanka who were engaged in uh, small-scale employment, earning a daily living, have been deprived of that income and therefore they are in dire straits. At this time, we should not therefore concentrate on Christmas as an external celebration where we enjoy and revel with good things around us, but think about the meaning of that little cave in Bethlehem and try to share our Christmas with those people. That is why I have stated and very clearly we would like our public to concentrate on a spiritual celebration of the Christmas and encouraging everyone to share the joy of their Christmas Christmas with those brothers and sisters who have been deprived of joy and happiness due to this COVID-19 pandemic. And also to inform the public that we have advised our priests to celebrate Christmas only in the non-lockdown areas because in the lockdown areas we cannot have any celebrations as such. In the non-lockdown areas to limit the celebration of Christmas, the Christmas festival and its ceremonies to the number of persons that have been indicated by the health officials. And at the moment, the number of persons indicated is 50, 50 per celebration. In order to cater to the large crowds that we have, therefore, it is necessary to multiply the ceremonies in such a way that the people can come, but all the same, not crowd the church and expose themselves to the danger of contracting the pandemic. Therefore, we have given instructions that all the instructions of the health authorities should be followed in this case, like washing of hands, then looking at the temperature, then keeping the one meter distance, then wearing a face mask and then participating in the ceremonies without any chance of exposing ourselves to contract the pandemic. To be very careful and also not to indulge in external celebration with a lot of crowds gathering together like dinners and gala ceremonies and encounters and meetings and all these kind of external activities, but to limit it to the family and celebrate it in the family with one's own family members and to celebrate it in a humble fashion. You may have a Christmas tree, you may have a crib at home, but please celebrate it privately. And if you have a possibility, please help another family or two in your area by providing something for them to have, considering the situation of the poverty that has come upon our people due to this COVID-19 situation. Avoid shopping in large numbers, avoid big gatherings, also tamashas and celebrations. This time, Sri Lanka is suffering economically also. Therefore, we would call upon the government not to waste money on unnecessary decorations, Christmas festival ceremonies and all that, and then to humbly celebrate, encourage the people to humbly celebrate Christmas. And I would like once again to appeal to our flock to kindly follow always the guidelines of the health authorities to avoid 
this sickness spreading in our country. Christmas should not become the moment in which Sri Lanka had an explosion of the pandemic. It must not become that moment, hopefully. So we request our Catholic brethren to be humble in their celebration. I wish all Sri Lankans, including our Catholic brethren, a very happy Christmas and a very blessed new. A COVID-positive mother has given birth to quadruplets at the Desoisa Maternity Hospital in Colombo today. The doctors have said that this is the first birth of quadruplets for a mother positive with COVID-19 following a cesarean or delivery in the world. The 29-year-old woman from Kupiavate in Colombo has given birth to quadruplets, two boys and two girls. She was tested positive for COVID-19 following the PCR test and she was admitted to a hospital on Colombo November 30th for delivery. Director of the hospital, Sagari Kirivandenia, said that the mother and children are in good health and have been placed in separate intensive care units at the hospital. An extensive staff of seven specialist doctors, 15 physicians and a nurse have been, been joined for the cesarean delivery. Deputy Director General of Health Services Dr. Heman Herat says that the initial clusters emerged in the country with the second wave of the outbreak are in the decline at present. He made these remarks during a media briefing held today. Up to now, we have observed that although the initial clusters that were seen in Gampaha and Kalambo districts are now being gradually reduced and less numbers are reported, but however, there has been small clusters appearing in different parts of the country and that is mainly due to the travelling of persons which was not fully restricted due to many reasons including the need to ensure that social and economic activity need to be restricted only to the minimum level. So most of the places in the country were not subjected to any kind of movement restrictions and therefore people moved in and out of different parts of the country and as a result a large number of clusters or small areas where small numbers reported have been observed. However, all these numbers or all these places, most of these persons who have been diagnosed as COVID positive have been linked to another known patient and therefore we have been identified most of them as contacts of some other patients and therefore all are linked to a single cluster. However, this is something that we need to take into very serious consideration why our movements are the main factor that gives rise to this kind of situations where small clusters are appearing in different parts of the country and therefore I urge the public and all other people in the country to make sure that our movements need to be restricted only to essential purposes and make sure that all health guidelines including the distancing, avoiding crowded places, wearing face masks and washing hands need to be done or adhered to as always wherever possible so that the risk of transmitting this disease to other places would be minimal. Head of the National Operations Centre for Prevention of COVID-19 Outbreak, Sri Lanka Army Commander Lieutenant General Shavendra Silva says that several new areas have been isolated from today. Accordingly, Nafir Vatta area in Vallavatta Police Division was isolated this evening. Akre Patu 5, Akre Patu 14 and the city limits in Akre Patu Police Division were isolated from 6 a.m. today. Palamune 1, Oluwil 2 and Adali Chennai, eight areas in Adali Chennai Police Division have also been isolated. Adali Vembu 1 upon 8, Alayadi Vembu 3 upon 8 and Alayadi Vembu 9 areas in Alayadi Vembu Police Division have also been isolated. Alupota Gramaniladari Division in Munaragla District has been declared as an isolated area at present. Reports have indicated that 
Travel restrictions have been imposed in Godagamu area, Ratnapura. The restrictions have been imposed after reporting several COVID-19 patients from this area. Panadura North Police took steps to impose travel restrictions in Totavatta area in Panadura from last night after recording 34 COVID-19 patients from the area in the recent past. A total of 9,363 COVID-19 recoveries have been reported in the country since the beginning of this month until today. A total of 701 COVID-19 recoveries were reported today. The highest recoveries recorded in a day was reported yesterday with 785 recoveries. A percentage of fully recovered COVID-19 patients in the country is at 75.19, taking the tally to 26,353. The percentage of active patients currently receiving treatments is at 24,035, with a tally at 8,536. Another 312 COVID-19 patients were identified in the island today. All the detected patients have been identified as close associates of the patients of the Paliagoda cluster. 15,237 PCR tests were conducted yesterday. The total number of PCR tests conducted as of far is 1,067,808. Eight members of the staff of catering operations divisions of the Bandaranaik International Airport have been tested positive for COVID-19. Issuing a statement, Sri Lanka Catering has mentioned that all necessary steps have been taken to protect the workforce in accordance to health guidelines and to prevent the further spread of the virus in the institution. Under the prevailing pandemic situation, Sri Lanka Catering is committed in adhering in international guidelines for the nutritious food production suitable for general consumption. Meanwhile, Minister Prasanna Ranatunga said that steps will be taken to initiate the tourism industry while adhering to health guidelines without causing any harm to the general public after reopening the airport on December 26th. World Health Organization and the European Commission have donated a sum of 2 million euros for the present COVID prevention program in the country. The financial donation was presented to Minister Pavitravani Arachi at the Ministry of Health. The donation was made by Ambassador of the European Council, Dennis Chobi. Head of Presidential Task Force for Economic Revival and Poverty Eradication, Basil Rajapaksa, says that the government is prepared to purchase all vegetable products of the farmers. The government aspires to render justice for both farmers as well as consumers through this initiative. Head of the Presidential Task Force, Basil Rajapaksa, made these remarks while taking part in the central provincial meeting of the national program of Gama Samaga Pilisandarak Tulin Vada Samaga Yali Gamata. The meeting was conducted at the Mahindra Rajapaksa Auditorium in Polgol, Lakandi. At the meeting, Chairman Basil Rajapaksa said that all political representatives, state officials and community development officials should join together for the development process of the villages. He said that the real objective in the development can be achieved for the grassroots level communities after such ventures. Lengthy discussions were held on the methodologies to minimize damages caused by wild animals on the agri lands in central province stating that the government has reached a decision to provide government lands which are currently not in use for cultivation purposes for the farmers to proceed with agricultural activities the chairman of the presidential task force said that a decision in this regard should also be reached in the grassroots level. Rural development projects and associated issues can be discussed in the Divisional Development Committee. The committees are scheduled to convene on December 21st and 22nd. The relevant meetings will be organized across all 14,021 Gramaniladari divisions in the country. The chairman of the Presidential Task Force mentioned that priority will be given for the proposals which will provide benefits for a large number of people. He also said that the demand the abandoned projects in the past will also be prioritized and each village should also select such a project. He also said that the creation of female entrepreneurs for each village has been emphasized to the budget proposals. Ministers Janaka Bandara Thinnakon, Kehali Rambukwala, Mahindananda Aludgamage and State Ministers Lohan Ratfate, Tilum Amunugama, Anuradha Jayaratna and Jeevan Thondaman were also present at the meeting. Governor of the Central Province, Atani Atlal, Lalit U. Gamage, Governor of the Southern Province, Willy Gamage, former provincial councillors, head, heads of local government institutes and state officials were also present. The discussion of the Uva Province will be held tomorrow. 
the government has taken steps to promptly implement the Supplementary Festival Credit Facilities Scheme initiated for all families. Accordingly, the Ministry of Finance has said that necessary instructions have been directed to Bank of Ceylon, People's Bank, National Savings Bank and Regional Development Bank to implement this credit facility scheme immediately. According to the statement issued by the Ministry of Finance this evening, head of public and private organizations are requested to provide the certified list of employees who are willing to enjoy this facility to the nearest branch of relevant at the state banks. The bank will make necessary arrangements to credit this facility to respective employees' accounts to enable them to use the facility during the festival season. The Department of Pensions and the Department of Summary Development also expected to provide their certified list to the state banks for the pensioners and some of the beneficiaries to enjoy this facility. The operators of three wheelers, school vans and private buses who have bank accounts in the state banks can also request the same facility from their respective banks by producing their national identity card. Those who do not belong to these categories and has accounts at the, uh, the above mentioned government banks may also apply for this credit facility and the bank may consider the request depending on their repayment capacity. The statement issued by the Ministry further indicates that the president expects fullest cooperation from all public sector and private sector organizations to assist their employees to obtain this supplementary festival credit facility and request to coordinate with the state banks to implement this facility. This credit facility will be provided at 0.625% monthly interest rate and repayment will be in 10 monthly installments commencing from the month of January 2021. The applicants can obtain the credit facility under three categories based on the revenue or salary at sums of 50,000 rupees, 25,000 rupees and 10,000 rupees respectively. Chairman of the Election Commission Nimal G. Punjiheva says steps will be taken to conduct the Provincial Council election immediately after formulating the legal provisions in the Parliament. The Election Commission was convened today and it was headed by Chairman of the Commission. Chairman of the Election Commission, Nimalji Punjiheva, said that the necessary steps to hold the election will be taken after formulating the necessary legal provisions required for the Provincial Council election in the Parliament. He said that the elections were not held in the stipulated time periods. He added that the Provincial Council elections were not held for a period of four years. He further added that the relevant funds in each province have not been approved through the public representatives but through the state officials. Therefore, he said that ele election can be held within two and a half months after the legislator resolved these issues in this regard. Meanwhile, Election Commission reached the following decisions today. The exhibiting of the lists of specimens with the proposed names to be included and excluded from the voters' register in the process to register voters for the year 2020 in travel restricted Colombo, Gampaha, and Kalatura districts due to the COVID 19 outbreak was scheduled on December 23, 2020. This date has been extended to January 5, 2021. A total of 7,000 million rupees were estimated for the presidential election 2019. However, with the steps taken to control the expenses, the approximate expenditure for the election was reduced up to 4,566 million rupees. The decision was reached to inform the Ministry of Provincial Councils and Local Government Authorities to take necessary steps to resolve the issues pertaining to hindrances in the Act to fulfill the councillorship vacancies in the local government institutions and other legal issues. Mr. Amitha Gamage has been appointed as the new chairman of the Development Lottery Board. This appointment has been carried out by the Ministry of Finance according to recommendations of President Gotabe Rajpaksha. Before being appointed as the new chairman of the Development Lottery Board, he assumed the duties as chairman of the Gem and Jewellery Authority. He's a professional accountant and rendered his services in several pioneering private sector companies and also worked in several audit companies abroad. The newly appointed chairman has more than 10 years working experience in business management and administrative fields. The County District Publication Office of the Government Information Department was declared open today. It was held under the patronage of Minister Kehali Rambukwella. 
The new publication office has been established at the Candy District Secretariat premises. The new office has been set up allowing the public in Candy area to purchase government ordinances and acts and other related documents while expanding the opportunity to reach for government information. The minister said that steps will be taken to establish publication offices across the country. He also said that 25 media schools will be established in each district during next year. Governor of the Central Province, Lalit Yugamage, was present at this occasion. That's it for tonight's English News Update. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Good night.